Welcome to the second video for Biology Form 5. Let's study biology together. We will be discussing a subtopic in Chapter 2 of Form 5 Biology called locomotion. The subtopic is locomotion in organisms. So here we'll answer an essay question and try and learn the technique of answering the essay question. So a model answer will be given together with the question. Let's get started. To begin, let us discuss locomotion in man. Locomotion means movement. So let's ask this question. How does a person bend his leg at the knee? Actually, there are two muscles involved and that's the biceps femoris and the quadriceps femoris, which is in the thigh area of a person. Biceps femoris is a big muscle behind the femur here and quadriceps femoris is also a large muscle in the front part of the thigh. Most students cannot remember this word so I'm going to teach you how to remember. To remember these two terms, we have to understand how the name is derived. Firstly, the word femoris comes from the word femur because these two muscles are just next to the femur. Femur, so we get the word femoris. Biceps means that this muscle here has two tendons of origin at the top. But we do not need to know where it is. We just need to know it's called biceps femoris. For quadriceps femoris, quadriceps, the name is quadriceps because it has four muscles but we do not need to know the structure. There's four parts in, its, in this muscle. Four parts in this muscle. That's why it's called quadriceps femoris. Right, the important thing is to know the action of these muscles in the bending and straightening of the leg. If a person wants to bend his leg, which muscle is involved to contract and bend the leg? It is the biceps femoris, right? It will contract. Now, to understand the movement that is caused by the muscle, just look at where the muscle is attached on the leg. You can see that biceps femoris is attached to the tibia at the back. This is tibia, the bone is called tibia. So, when biceps femoris contracts, it will pull this bone backward, right? And in that way, the leg will bend. So, when biceps femoris contracts, it pulls the tibia backwards and the leg is bent backwards at the knee. At the same time, quadriceps femoris relaxes, right? Because biceps femoris and quadriceps femoris are called antagonistic muscles. When one contracts, the other will relax. They work in opposite ways. That is the definition of antagonistic muscles. Now, the calf muscle is found in the lower part of the leg, at the back. We do not need to really discuss the function, but just know, be aware that when it contracts, since it's attached to the heel of the foot, when it contracts, it will pull the heel to it and the leg here, will, the foot will straighten to the back. So when it does that, it's actually pressing on the ground and the ground will push back onto the person with an opposite reaction. Thus, this provides the force for the person to move forward. Okay, but anyway, today we are discussing just the main muscles, biceps femoris and quadriceps femoris. Okay, calf muscle is here at the back and the front part, you have the anterior tibialis muscle. 
but these two muscles are rarely asked. Okay, these two we have to know. Biceps femoris and quadriceps femoris. To straighten the leg, the opposite action occurs. Quadriceps femoris contracts instead, while the biceps femoris here will relax. So when quadriceps femoris contracts, you can see it's attached to the front part of the tibia. Therefore, you will pull the tibia to it as it contracts. You pull the tibia this way. That means to the front. Huh? So when quadriceps femoris contracts, it pulls the tibia forwards and the leg is straightened. Right? So we say that quadriceps femoris is an extensor. An extensor is a muscle that straightens the limb like the hand or the leg. So in this case, quadriceps femoris is an extensor because it straightens the leg when it contracts. Whereas biceps femoris is called a flexor because it bends the leg backwards, backwards when it contracts. Right? So flexor and extensor. You also have to know these two terms. For example, in the arm, which muscle is the flexor? The biceps muscle. And which muscle is the extensor in the arm? It's the triceps muscle. Okay, so uh, just a memory aid for you. Biceps femoris contracts to bend the knee, right? So to help you remember, look at the word B. Biceps femoris contracts and bends the knee. Bends, huh? B bends. The other thing is that it bends backwards. Goes backwards. Huh? The, the lower leg will go backwards. And the third thing is the biceps femoris is at the back of the thigh. It's the back part, not the front part. So the B stands for a lot of things. Huh? Helps the leg to bend backwards. Also, it is located at the back of the thigh, not the front. Okay, so by looking at this B, we know a lot of things about the biceps muscle. Let us now look at a question, which is a forecast question, and see how we can answer this question. So in the process, we also learn the technique of answering. Right. Based on the diagram, explain how a man is adapted for movement in his habitat. So this question, if you read it carefully, is asking you to explain how a person is adapted for movement, movement uh, in his habitat. Therefore, we must think about those tissues that are involved in movement, structures and tissues involved in movement for a human being. And the habitat means the natural place where the organism lives, and that is on land. So he moves on land by walking, as we can see here. So how to explain? How do we explain this uh, movement? Is it just the muscles or is there more to it? because it's 10 marks. And notice that A is labeled here, B is the other label on the other side here. Okay, so you need to know these two muscles, identify them, and then you can write your essay answer. So here's the question again based on the diagram, explain how a man is adapted for movement in his habitat. Let's see how we can obtain 10 marks for this question. Movement in man involves five tissues and one structure. So we must be aware that movement in man is not just caused by the bones or muscles, but there are many other tissues involved. So try and recall back the names of the tissues that we have studied in this topic. Right, so the structure are the joints and the tissues are the bones, tendons, ligaments, cartilage and muscles. 
So you have to explain the characteristics of all these items here, plus their adaptations. We start with the joint. Now joint at the knee is the joint between what bones? The thigh bone is called the femur and the bone on the lower leg is called the tibia. So femur and tibia. And this joint is what type of joint? Okay, it's a bioterm, right? Hinge joint. Now, hinge joint allows movement in how many planes according to its definition? One plane. Tendons connect. Okay, state the function of tendons. Tendons connect what tissue with what tissue? Muscles to bones. So, the tendons are found at the knee area also. And they are, now state two characteristics. So, tendons are tough and elastic or inelastic. Okay, they are tough and inelastic. Okay, they have to be inelastic in order to transmit the pulling force of the muscle to the bone. You can even state that here, right? So, if they are inelastic, they can transmit the pulling force of the muscle to the bone. Okay, they cannot be elastic. If they are elastic, they are like rubber bands that can stretch. So when the muscle contracts, the pulling force of the muscle cannot be transmitted to the bone if the tendon is elastic. The tendon will just stretch and not be able to transmit the pulling force of muscle to bone. So tendons are inelastic, right? Now we talk about the next tissue is the ligament. So ligaments connect what tissue to what tissue? Bone to bone. And they are, now they are very different from tendons, they are tough and elastic, right? They are elastic. You can even elaborate here and say that they hold the bones together and they also prevent dislocation of bones. So we've discussed the joints, tendons and ligaments. Let's go on to the next tissue to discuss and that's the cartilage. Cartilage at the ends of the bones. What is the function? What are two functions of the cartilage? Reduce friction at between the bones. Uh, cartilage reduces friction between the bones at the joints. It also the second function absorbs shock. Next, you talk about the you can talk about the straightening and bending of the leg. Now, if you look if you look at the first diagram, it shows the leg straightened, not bent. So you must follow the diagram, right? So you can say referring to the first diagram to straighten the leg, muscle B. So on the diagram, muscle B is the muscle at the front part of the thigh. Okay, so muscle B is the quadriceps femoris. It must contract to pull the tibia forwards so that the leg is in a straight position, right? At the same time, the other muscle will relax and that is the muscle at the back called the biceps femoris. The leg is, at this in this condition, the leg is bent or straightened? So straightened at the knee. Next, the second diagram shows the leg in a bending position or bent position. So which muscle contracts? So remember B for bend and the muscle is also starts with a B, right? So it's biceps femoris. And you can also mention that biceps femoris, of course, is the muscle labeled A. That may get you one mark. Don't straight away state it as biceps femoris, but didn't mention that it's A because the the diagram is labeled uh, with the A. Biceps femoris is labeled as A. So you must identify A first, right? And then only explain. So biceps femoris contracts while quadriceps femoris relaxes. Contraction of contraction of biceps femoris pulls the tibia B for backwards. And the leg is B for bent at the knee. Biceps femoris and quadriceps femoris are a pair of now this is a Biology term, what type of muscle is it? Antagonistic muscles, which work in opposite ways to one another. 
and you can mention when one contracts the other will relax so that's the answer and it, it is you will get you more than 10 marks actually but you will get the full 10 marks for this answer if you write in detail like this concerning the five tissues and one structure here is a good mnemonic for you to use for essay questions like the one that we just discussed where you have to know the five tissues involved in support and locomotion and one structure that's the joint bony just misses tender loving care bony may be a cat who was lost and then was found again b-o-n for bone j for joints m for muscle t-e-n-d for tendon l for ligament and c-a-r for cartilage That's all for this video. In the next video, we'll continue to discuss locomotion in organisms. That is, we'll discuss locomotion in an earthworm or locomotion of an earthworm. And it will, there will also be a question followed by an answer so that we can learn the technique of answering questions, essay questions. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.